Hey everybody, today Rado runs through the Voyages of Marco Polo, which is a very, very popular new dice worker placement game that just came out a few months ago from the designers of Zulkin the Mind Calendar. I'm going to be doing a run through of today so you can see what it's all about. I've already got the game set up here, and in this game, we are basically following in the footsteps of Marco Polo, or we might even be Marco Polo, depending on which special character card we get. And we start out way over there in Venice, and you can see there's the whole Silk Road just waiting for us to set up a series of, what do you call them, trade houses on, or, you know, caravan houses. And there is a bunch of stuff we are trying to achieve in this game. You get points by completing contracts. Everybody starts with one contract, and there's a whole bunch more, basically shipping stuff back to Venice. You get points for exploring and setting up trade houses all over the place. And at the beginning of the game, everybody gets a couple of cards through a very quick card draft that give them targets. You want to set up trade houses, like I want to set up trade houses in Alexandria, Kashgar, uh, Samarkanda, and uh, Xi'an. And if I can do all of that, I'll get 5 plus 4 plus 10, so I can get 19 points if I get to all four of those locations. Jen, she wants to get to Sumatra, Anshi, Karakom, or, uh, Karakoram, and Adana, which will get her a lot more points. You know, 15 points for hitting these two and then these two, and 10 for hitting all four of them, or 6 for hitting three of them, or 3 for hitting only two of these. So... There's definitely a, a lot of points to be had for traveling around. There's a lot of points to be had for completing these contracts. Six points, six points, eight points, five points. And there's also points to be had on the board, depending on where you go. Because as we set up trading houses in these different cities, we get access to different stuff. Like if I, if I set up a shop over here in Lanzhou, I can trade spices for victory points. Or I could trade silk for victory points over here in Karachi. Or camels plus silk over here in Samarkanda. So... There's a lot of ways to get points. We're going to play through five rounds. This is a very fast playing game, and let's get going. Now, in this particular game, I'm going to be Mercator, and my special power is every time, basically, somebody visits the market or the con's favor, I get bonuses for free. I get to kind of leech off of them. Whereas Jen, she is uh, Car Carprini, or Johan Carprini, whose special power is she basically knows all the shortcuts. She can travel very quickly across the land, plus every round, at the beginning of the round, this is what this exclamation point means, at the beginning of a round, she gets three bucks. So, speaking of it, let's start going. Now, the first thing that happens in a round is we determine player order, which at the beginning of the game, I'll be the first player, which is why I get seven bucks, and Jen, as the second player, gets eight bucks. We both also start with two camels. After you determine player order, everybody with an exclamation point, either on some card they've got or some location they visited, you know, once... Once, once somebody gets over here to Kochi, at the beginning of the round, you get to, well, basically choose the power of any other village on the board. Or, you know, if you've made it over to Ormuz, you get, at the beginning of a round, a camel and three bucks, etc., etc. So, Jen does get three bucks because of her special starting power. So, Jen actually started with 8, 9, 10, 11. Jen is loaded um, right, out, right out of the bat. Me, I don't have any exclamation points, so I don't get anything. So, we do the exclamation point stuff. Then, we get our dice back. Although, of course, we're starting with our dice. And then, we roll. Roll, roll the dice. Let's see what I get. All righty. All right. And Jen, she's going to roll her dice as well. Everybody starts with five dice in their color. There are a couple of characters. There, there's one character in particular who can let you actually start with six dice. Let's see here. So there we go. Now, after rolling, there's a special check we have to make. If you rolled epically low, if your total sum of your dice is 15 or le is less than 15, you can get a bonus. And interestingly, I rolled terribly. Eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I now get a get compensated for my very, very low dice, to, um, I can take either money or camels. In this case, I was, I was at 12, right? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I can take three bucks, three camels, or some combination thereof to get up to 15. Let's see, do I want camels or do I want money? Hmm. Well, let's see, that really depends on what I want to do. And I know right off the bat, because I've got a secret goal. And by the way, these are secret. Nobody knows that I'm trying to get to Alexandria and Kashgar and Samarkanda and Xi'an. Alexandria is right is spitting distance right next to Venice. So I'm going to want to travel here right off the bat. 
Uh, and when I do, if I'm the first player to get here, I'll get a bonus of two gold. Let's see. Do I need money or camel? So, and I don't need money or camel. I don't need camels to make this trip. And after I do that, let's see. Well, it's interesting. This kind of gives me an overall plot for the entire game. I want to get, and you can see on the, on the map, it shows kind of where they are. I want to get, first of all, to Alexandria. And from Alexandria, I'm going to want to travel over here to Kashgar. And along the way, I'm also going to want to stop at Samarkanda and finally end up at Xi'an. And also, before the game is over, I desperately want to get to Beijing as well because the first player to reach Beijing gets 10 points, the second player gets 7 points, and so on. So, there's a big, a big push to get to Beijing also. So, those are all the places I want to go. So, if I were to plot out my travel plans, I probably want to come down here to Alexandra, then over, head over here to Samarkanda, then to Kashgar, and then skip up to Beijing, and finally my last trip down here to Xi'an. So, that's what I want to do. Now, I don't need extra money or camels to travel this road from Venice to Alexandria. But after I'm done with that, from Alexandria, if I want to get over here to uh, Samarkanda, I will either have to travel this way, which is going to cost seven additional bucks and then up and around, or I'll have to come back this way and then travel down this road, which costs, what is it, three extra camels. So I know for my second travel to get over here, I'm either going to need more camels or more money. Hmm, let's see. Um, and both are hard to come by. But, oh, jeepers creepers. Which one do I want? Do I want the money or the camels? Oh, right off the bat, immediately a very, very tough choice. You know, I think I'll just go with the money, just because it gives me a little bit more flexibility. So, uh, because I rolled low, I ended up with three extra bucks. So I'm a little bit less jealous of all the money Jen got. All right, let's see. And she was well, nine. Um, yeah, she's well over 15, so she doesn't get any extra compensation. So now that we're done with the rolling, now we begin the round where we are going to take turns using our dice as workers, doing worker placement stuff in all of these spaces, these spaces, these spaces, these spaces to do various actions, to move around the world, to go to the market, to get goods that we need to complete contracts, to get new contracts, to get the favor of the con, to get one of any good plus two camels, to make some more money if we're getting a little short of cash. So, I am the first player, I've got the first player marker, and these are all the dice I've got. Now, what do I want to do? Well, I do want to travel to Alexandria, and because here's the thing, for all I know, Jen wants to go to Alexandria too. She, she might very want to go there. The first player to get here gets this nice little bonus of two gold. And if you look at this contract I started with, I need one gold, two camels, and one spice to be able to complete that contract. Ooh. Yeah, so I would like to get to Alexandria first. And just in case Jen's going to go that way, because you never know, she might. I think the first thing I'm going to do right out of the gate is I am going to travel. Uh, let's see, I will take my two ones here. And you can see, to travel, this is the travel section, you have to put two dice down. So I'll put my two ones here. Now then, um, putting down the two ones means whenever, or, yeah, or it means I get, the, the higher the value of the dice, basically, I'm eh, still a little sick. <sighs> kind of, all right, think straight. Okay. The higher the value of your dice, the better the action you get to do. Since I, and I had to put two dice here, but if I say I had put like a one and a three, you know, just as an example, the lower value die determines what I get to do. And in this case, it means I get to move one space. And even though I put a three here, I don't get to move three spaces because the lower die determines what you get to do. So that's why I'm just using both of my low B dice to come over here because with a one being my low value die, I get to move one space. Now moving one space is gonna cost me, moving one space is gonna cost me three bucks. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move it out. I'm gonna pay my three bucks, which I just got as compensation. And I'm gonna move one. So I could move this way over here to this oasis. I could move over here, but I'd, it would require me extra camels, but that's not where I want to go. I want to come down here to Alexandria. And I have reached my first goal. And uh, since I'm the first person to Alexandria, I just got two gold, which means I'm that much closer to finishing my starting contract. And now I put my first trading house on the board. And now what that means is for the rest of the game, I now have a new worker placement action. I can put one of my dice over here to basically score victory points for the number of contracts I've completed. So getting here means now I've got another cool. If I can complete a lot of contracts, I can put dice here and just start scoring lots of points, lots of prestige for all the contracts I've completed. So anyway, that was my first turn. And now if Jen were to come to Alexandria, she gets access to this power as well. But 
she missed out on the two gold. So that was my first turn. Now it is Jen's turn. And I had to use two dice to do that. So I've only got three dice left. Now what is Jen going to do? I haven't really thought much about what she wants to do. Now she, the interesting thing about her is her special power is that when she, basically she can consider every oasis on the board to be adjacent. So, I mean, that means Jen can move really far very quickly. Jen could go one and then from this oasis, two over to this oasis and then three and you know and just in one turn boom she could be on the other side of the world all that would take a movement of three to move three spaces means your low die you have to put over here has to be a three and you have to pay 12 bucks so that's pretty expensive the farther you move uh the 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 farther you go so and you know and the interesting thing is jen chose i mean you, you have four and you choose two jen chose two very challenging cards where the locations are very far away from each other on the opposite sides of the world. But that's how Jen is going to use her teleport, her effective, you know, shortcut ability of adjacent oases plus extra money to get around. But you know what? Still, to do all this movement, she's going to need a lot more money. And one of the places Jen needs to go is Adana, which is right down here. And if Jen gets to Adana, for the rest of the game, at the beginning of rounds two, three, four, and five, she'll make five bucks. So getting down here is effectively will get her twenty dollars over the course of the game, which she's going to need because she's going to travel quite a bit because of her goal and her special power. Maybe she'll do some contracts as well. I mean, in this game, you really kind of double down on contracts, you double down on travel, or you kind of split it between the two. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So. I think Jen, before the first round is out, wants to get down here to Adana, but that is going to be one, two, three. And as you can see, for this little leg, she needs two camels. So that means Jen needs 12 bucks to be able to move three spaces, three legs in one turn. Now she doesn't quite have 12 bucks. She has five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. She's almost got 12 bucks. But here's another problem. Jen's going to need even more money because, okay, she needs to move three spaces. So what she's going to do is she has to put two dice over here on the movement area, like I did, right? But since I've already taken the space, Jen now has to stack her dice on top of mine. So she might go like this. And um, so that means her low value die is a four, which means she could go four spaces, which it costs her 12 bucks. And you can see th three spaces is 12 bucks, four spaces is 12 bucks. So it's kind of painful to only move three spaces. So that's what she needs to do. Um, so she would need 12 bucks, but because um, Jen is following after me, she's going to an occupied space, she has to pay a penalty. In addition to what she has to pay over here, she would also have to pay four additional dollars for, the, for, um, for her low value. So she would have to pay 16 bucks now to move all the way down here to Adana because she didn't get here first. And that is really very painful. It'd be nicer if she'd rolled a three, because if she'd rolled a three, because she only needs to move three spaces, then she'd only have to pay three extra bucks instead of four extra bucks, which is still 15 bucks. So that is tricky. Plus she needs two camels. So the fact that I moved first, it's kind of semi blocked her from doing what she wants to do. And maybe she should think about something else. Maybe she should go somewhere else. Um, because see, because she could only move two spaces, she can come over here to Moscow. Although she, she has no particular desire to go to Moscow, it'd be kind of nice to get the one-time little benefit of her choice. One gold, one spice, or one silk. But I don't think she cares about that. I mean, heck, maybe she won't move at all this turn, and she'll just spend this turn trying to save up money so that she has enough money to be able to make the big trip next turn. Uh, and it's really kind of a shame. Let's see, does her teleporting go? Let's see, she could go one, two, three. Either way, it's two. Now, she doesn't have to move the whole way. She could just make a little baby step like me, come over in Alexandria, get one of her trading houses on the board because you also want to get trading houses because if you, you start with nine. If you get your eighth trading house onto the board, that's five points. If you get your ninth trading house on the board, that's 10 points. So just moving around, if you, if you stop in enough towns, that can get you points as well. Hmm, shoot. So, Jen, what was it? It was, she'd need 16 bucks. She has eight. Now, there are ways to make money. You can come over, you can spend dice over here. Or I should say, every turn, you're going to do one core action. That's what I did. I did a core action. But in addition to a core action, you can do bonus actions. And they're all listed here on the other side of this player board. Bonus actions include completing a contract. They include, um, 
just putting dice over here to get money. You can get three bucks. Jen, what does she need? She has eight, she needs 16, so she needs eight more. She could just put three dice over here, and that's a bonus action, and get nine bucks, and then she would have enough money to make it down there. But her whole turn would be devoted to just making that turn, so that'd be kind of wasteful. Um, you can also use your camels to change your dice. If you want to, um, to re-roll a die, you can spend one camel and re-roll one of your dice and try to get something better. Or you can spend two camels to increase or decrease the value of one die. Or you can spend three camels and get an extra die, which can give you more ability. Huh. Well, you know what? I think the first thing Jen's going to do is, camels are good, camels are helpful. Jen's going to spend one of her high level fives, she's going to put it over here, and since she, and you see this is her first action, and she put a five, uh, puts her in the five column, Jen just picked up five more camels. So she'll take one of these threes, which are slightly bigger, and two more. So now Jen has a lot of camels, and that gives her a lot more options for manipulating her dice or even getting additional dice. Okay, so that was Jen's first turn. Now it is my turn again. Now, I've already done all the traveling I want to do, because here's the thing. I cannot put more of my own colored dice on this space. Now that I've traveled, I can't travel again unless I get some special bonus for traveling, like, let's see... Um, if I, uh, if I were over in, where, let's see, I think, I, wasn't there a travel town here somewhere? No, I can't see one at all. Oh, wait, no, like if I'm the first to get to Car, uh, Car Corm, I get this bonus of one free travel move, as an example. So, um, oh yeah, over here in, in Sumatra. If I, if I were in this town, I could put a die here, and that means I could spend two non-matching items to do a move. So, you know, there's a lot of options for moving, but this is the main way. It's also a very expensive way, and I've already used it. So I'm not going to be able to move anymore unless I get access to some other way of moving. So I think for the rest of the round, I want to see if I can finish this contract, which I'm pretty close to. I've got two camels. I've got one gold. I just need one spice, and I could complete this. So maybe I should go on ahead. I could use my, my five and come over here. Oh, by the way, oopsie, I totally forgot. When Jen came over here to get camels, my special power is whenever Jen visits the market to get something, I get one of those things as well. So Jen picked up some camels. I got a free camel. So that was quite nice. I got to remember that. Every time Jen comes here or here or here to any of these three spaces, I get free goods because that's my special power. So. Um, so I could come over here and get a whole bunch of spice and some money, which would be nice, and then I'd have everything I need to complete this contract. But you know what? I think, I think instead, I'm going to get myself another contract. Although, no, no, no. Well, here's the thing. If I come over here to place contracts, I can get pick up one or two contracts. Now, currently, I've only got space for one contract. So what I should do is, I should get my spices first so I can complete that contract. Then I've got spaces open. Then I can come over here and I can pick up two new contracts. So that makes sense. So I think my next action is, I'm going to take my three and pick up three spices. So I get one, two, three. All right. And now, one of my spices, it can go over here. And remember, one of my free bonus actions I can do, I, I can do as many of these bonus actions as I, as I want to, that I can afford to do. One of the types is I can complete a contract. I'm going to complete this contract because I've got everything I need. I've got my gold, my camels, and my spices. Boom. And my reward for completing this contract is four points and a black die. So first of all, I am on the board with four points, and I just got myself another die. Although I didn't roll very well with it, that's unfortunate, but what the heck. Okay, so that was my next one. Now, by the way, at the end of, and so I could, now that I've got a completed contract, I could put this five die over here, and that means I get to activate the ability of this town five times. Uh, because I put a five here, and what that means is, for every contract I've completed, I get one point, and since I've completed one contract, I could activate this town five times and get five points, just like that. I could spend the rest of my game pretty much standing still, getting um, um, you know resources to complete contracts, and just keep trying to leverage that. That would be a potentially viable strategy. I'd be giving up a lot of points for travel, but there's a lot of ways you can go in this game. So anyway. So I've completed, I, I did my core, which was pick up some spices, and I did a bonus action, which was complete a contract. So that was my turn. And now it is Jen's turn again. All right. So now she's got a bunch of camels. She could use two of these camels to turn this two, or I'm sorry, this four into a three. And then she puts the four and five down. She'd be able to move the three spaces and only have to pay three. But she'd still need 15 bucks. So she gave up two camels to turn this, and then she used these. That means she could put these over here and get six, 
And six plus eight is 14. That is not enough for Jen to do her big trip. Although what Jen could also do is, Jen could give up three camels, you know, this, this big old triple, to get another die, which if nothing else, that other die could get her three more bucks. Yeah, I think she's gonna do it. All right, so Jen is gonna pay three camels to get her own extra die. And uh, let's see what she gets. A five, okay. So now Jen, she's still got a whole bunch of dice. I'm almost done, I'm down to three dice left. Jen's got five dice. So what is she gonna do? Okay, so she got her extra die, she paid dearly with camels, and now she wants um, some money. Right. So if she spends two more camels, she could, I mean, because this is a bonus action, she can turn this four into a three. And now these two things would let her move, and these three things would get her, yeah, so Jen, it's a bit crazy, but what the heck, Jen's gonna do it. She's gonna get all three of these to get nine more bucks. Let's take a 10. Because she could do that three times. And unfortunately, I don't get to benefit from that. Jen knows every time she goes to the market, it helps me. Every time she goes to the cons favor, it helps me. But coming over here does not help me. So Jen just made nine bucks. And now that was again, those were three bonus actions she took. And now she is going to put this three and this five here, which means the low number is three. So she can move up to three spaces if she pays 12. Now she could still only move two spaces if she paid seven or whatever. But so now, first of all, for coming here, Jen has to pay three bucks penalty because she has to match her low value. All right. So now she's going to pay um, 12 bucks. Where well, goes five and 10. And so that means she can move three spaces and here she goes. One, two, and now she needs two camels to travel this road. So she'll spend her last two camels three. And that was expensive. That pretty much wiped her out. But in the first turn, she has made it to Adana. And that means every round, she's going to be making five bucks. And that's a, hopefully, it will prove to be worth it. We shall see. Plus, Jen has also reached one of her four target cities. Okay. And her turn is over. She, there's nothing more she can do. So she went from having all the dice in the world to having none. And so now, back to me. I've still got some more stuff I can do. Now, I think I'm going to go on ahead over here. And I'm going to get me some new contracts. And the value five means I can come, I can take one or two of anything up to contract number five. Uh, I can't get contract number six, but I can get, so I definitely will take contract number five because not only do I get the contract, which is three camels, two, uh, it's a bunch of stuff, which will get me five points, four bucks, and three camels. So I'll pay three camels, but I'll get them back. And also for taking this, I get one dollar or one camel, my choice. <coughs> I think I'll take a camel. All right, there we go. And I get to take one more, so I can take any of these other ones. Hmm, ba, 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 ba. let's see. Um, I think I'll grab this one, because when I complete this one, I not only get six points, but I'll get another. I'll be able to pick up another contract for free, so I might be able to combo a string of contracts. So now, I've got two contracts. Remember, I want to finish contracts as fast as possible, so that I can start using the special power of this city that I'm in and getting more and more points. Heck, maybe this is a tougher contract to do. Maybe I should choose a different, an easier contract. Um, well, no, actually, there... This one's pretty tough, too, because I need two gold. Gold is the toughest resource in the game to get, because you need to give up three dice to pick up gold. Yeah, I'll just go with that. Okay, so, and let's see, so I picked up the contracts, and now all the other contracts get cheaper. Okay, and so Jen's done. She can't do anything more. I've still got two dice to do. Now what do I want to do? I can't travel anymore. Um, I do have two dice, or two, um, so I could change one of these to a three or a one. Or I could give up one and just re-roll completely. Now, I do want to start preparing to travel probably back to Venice and then across this road where I need three camels and then over to Samarkanda. Hmm. Or I could just go on ahead and put a two over here. And that means I would get, well, a five over here would have been five points, but a two is just two points. So I could get two more points, but is there something better I could do? Let's see. Now, i got to think, how am I getting to Samarkanda? Do I want to come back this way via requiring um, camels, or do I want to come this way requiring money? Now, if, either way, it's one, two, three spaces if I want to make the move all at once. So one, two, three. And remember, moving three spaces at once costs 12 bucks. It's crazy expensive. Um, so I think, I think I will just go on ahead and kind of follow Jen's playbook and get six bucks. So I can start saving up for my very expensive trip. Now, 
I could make the trip cheaper by um, you know, doing a series, because it's interesting. Moving three spaces costs 12 bucks. Moving one space costs three bucks. So if I just move one space three times, that's a total of nine. It's actually more money, um, uh, you know, it, it's more spin thrifty to move only a single time at once. It gets more expensive the farther you move. But the problem is we only get to play through four rounds and you only get to activate this central move once uh, except under special circumstances. So you don't get very many opportunities to move in the game. That's why you want to make the big moves if you want. Um, so anyway, so that's why I took a bunch of money so I can start saving up for my big trip. So I've got, I've got 12 bucks now. If I'm quick, if I'm the first to move next turn, um, and if I have to roll the right dice, I could spend my 12 bucks, but I also need three camels, and I've only got two. So next turn, I'm going to have to get another camel and maybe some more money, because it depends, because Jen might move first. And if Jen moves first, then I'd have to move second, and then I'd have to pay the movement fee for coming in second. But anyway, so I use my dice to get some cash, and uh, that's it. So we are all done, you know, collecting cash, or you know, doing our rounds, and now at the end of the turn, the last thing that happens is any contracts that weren't picked up by anybody are out of the game. Okay, and now we are ready to start the second round. So the second round, new contracts come out. So you can see this is keeping track. We're on the second round now, then the third, the fourth, and the fifth. So new contracts. D -d -d. So here's another opportunity. If you complete this contract, you get one free movement. And movement is so hard to come by. It's so expensive. So you're always looking for little extra bonuses you can do to move. All right. So uh, new contracts come out. Everybody who has an exclamation point gets a free bonus. I still have no exclamation points, but Jen now gets three bucks plus five bucks. Jen, every round, gets eight bucks at the start of a turn, which is going to help her moving quite a bit. All right, so we get our, and now we get our dice back. The uh, Verful, Komen Zaruk. So I get my greens, and I'm going to roll them, and we'll see what I got. Let's see, am I below 15 this time? No, I'm definitely not. These black ones come back. Jen will roll her dice. All righty. And so Jen also rolled high, it looks like. Yep. So no bonuses, no 15. And now we're ready for the second round to start. Oh, and one other thing I forgot. The first thing that happens at the beginning of a round is determine who is the first player. Now, last round, you remember, I went and then Jen went. The last player to activate the travel spaces becomes the first player. So Jen is the first player this round. Which is scary because you want to be the first player to activate any spaces so that you don't have to pay the penalty. But the interesting thing is you want to be the last player to move so that you can become first player next turn. But anyway, so this round Jen is going to be first player. And so if Jen moves first, it's going to be very expensive for me to move because I'll have to follow her. All right. But you know what? I think that was one full round, showed you a lot of the basics, and I think that's a good place to stop as any. And if you'd like, you can go on ahead and hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough and watch me continue to play through, I don't know, maybe two or three rounds. I'll do some more stuff, complete some more contracts. You see, I've got all these contracts I want to do. I need, as much as I need to move, I need to start collecting a lot of resources so I complete these contracts. Jen still hasn't even touched her first contract, and this is such an easy contract to do. One camel and two silk to get three, to get five bucks and three points. Maybe she'll do it, maybe she won't. Maybe she'll just be solely focused on traveling this whole game. Who knows? But if you'd like to find out, you can hit the I to go to the extended playthrough or final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.